Hello and welcome to the show. We have got a, another vehicle taking on the Hot Wheels showdown today and we are going for a rather classic car. The C2 Corvette is going to be taking on the course. Now, these cars have tended to do pretty damn well in previous builds series. That being said, when it comes to the Hot Wheels showdown, it has uh, not always been the same cases we've had from, well, autocross and rallying, etc. The Dodge Daytona did pretty well. I would expect this to potentially be even faster than the, uh, the rather large Dodge. So, yeah, I reckon this stands a chance of maybe going towards, at least towards the top of the table. We're going to start, of course, by putting the car on some race tyres. That jumps the PI up a lot. Okay, there's a there's a lot of PI in that, and it will get some nice big tyres on here. 275s at the front. I'm hoping at least three, ooh, three, four fives all the way to the, uh, the lovely giant tyres. And this is on a car, let's not forget, considerably smaller than that of the Daytona. Hopefully, a little bit lighter as well. We can get a decent amount of power. Again, I would expect to get a decent amount of power in this car. It's um, yeah, I, th I think a good, a good, a good choice of vehicle. Very, very low with the <laughs> that exhaust out the side. Hopefully, we won't bounce off the uh, land on, on the landing of the jump too much. It seems to be random as to what cars get affected really badly by that uh, that jump. Almost, we've had our fair share of uh, unfortunate cars of late. Let's hope that doesn't happen with the uh, the Corvette Stingray here. Uh, down to two thousand nine hundred pounds. I'd like it a little bit lighter. We might be able to. In fact, if we end up having to go for an engine swap, I don't know if we will. But uh, if we do, uh, we are going to have to go for a, a full-on gearbox because I need to be able to adjust gear ratios and we need we need more. I'm assuming these came with a four-speed. I could be wrong, but uh, we need more than four gears. Five gears we can get away with. In fact, some of our fastest cars have had five gears, but uh, we need more than four around this. Otherwise, you end up with very, very long gears and fall out of power bands a little bit. Okay. Now, engine-wise, we are at the lower part of, uh, of S1 class, which means we can get plenty of power. Our options are to go for twin turbos, we can go for a supercharger, or we can go for a centrifugal supercharger. Um, I am going to have a look at doing the supercharger route. Now, I don't know how much power the standard engine in this car can get, if it is even going to be enough to get us to the top of S1 class. With cars like these, often um, the handling bits uh, they make the biggest difference to the PI, and the power not quite so much. Uh, now, I would expect this to be a fairly, you know, a fairly solid engine. However, it does not look like we are going to get to the top of S1 class with it, unless the supercharger adds crazy levels of power, which it doesn't. Even the turbo wouldn't get us to the top of S1 class. So, we are going to forego that. Oh, I haven't done, I haven't done important bits. We need some uh, aero parts on the vehicle, of course. Uh, we need all of the grip. All of the grip that we can get in this vehicle is very, very important. Now, engine swaps. There are three available. We can have the 6.2 litre V8, the 8.4 V10, or the 6.5 V12. Now, in keeping with the uh, Stingray, we're going to go with the 6.2 V8. It is also the lightest of the engines. I know it's going to get uh, towards the 1,000 horsepower mark, so plenty of power available. Now, on this one here, uh, it is completely identical between the supercharger and turbos in terms of power. I'll have the uh, supercharger in that, uh, in that instance. And then we go back to all of this and shoving on power parts. Hopefully... Fingers crossed should be enough to get us to the top of the uh, of the PI. Get, make sure we get an exhaust on. Exhaust is a great... I've talked about this a few times in the past. Exhaust is a brilliant part when it comes to build, building a car. It adds a fair amount of power, but also uh, takes off a fair amount of weight. So it's often one of my go-to bits when I am uh, building the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, do we want to go all the way on camshafts, or do we... We might just sit at the, the one below and then get some other bits and pieces. So yeah, these aren't really making a huge amount of difference in terms of the PI in the vehicle here. We're looking at around the uh, the 900 horsepower mark with this car. Now what I might be able to do here is do we want to go... That does add a fair bit of weight, but I can get weight out in other ways. So that's what we're going to go for in here. We'll get flywheel, we'll get drive line, and so on. I'll take the extra power in this one. We'll give it a try, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try in our Corvette. 937 horsepower, 800 torque. This all in a car that weighs just 2,700 pounds by the time we are done with it. That's a big power to weight ratio. This is going to be a very, very quick car in terms of straight line speed. The big question... The big question is how good is it going to be through the corners? It has got giant tyres, and I know the Stingray is a very, very good kind of base car, certainly for the, for its age. 
Whether we'll be able to keep up with the touring cars or not, we will have to wait and see. So, we have brought the Stingray to the Skyscraper takeoff circuit, where it is going to have five laps to try and go as fast as possible. Its main rival is, well, the Dodge Charger Daytona, of course, the highest placed American car, 134.5, the time to try and beat. I would perhaps think that uh, the Stingray is going to be capable of, uh, of that. Whether it's going to be fast enough to get into the, well, 133.6 is our current leader uh, with the uh, Sierra Cosworth Ferrari Testarossa uh, on a very, very similar time as well in second place. Whether it can quite go that fast, I do not know. But we shall give it a good old try. That's a lot more understeer than I was expecting. <laughs> That was not really a huge amount in the way of turning right there. And we're going to have similar problems through turn four. Again, eh, it could be worse. We are, of course, on relatively cold tyres. It will probably improve. And as I get the hang of what I can and can't do with it. Oh, wow, it really does not want to get turned in particularly well. That's a small bit of a concern. I mean, it's all very well and good having this power. We've got decent traction. Got no real problems with wheel spin at all in this uh, in this vehicle. But if we can't get the front end turned in and change direction very well, that is going to cost us a lot of time. We've seen in this uh, in this series, you need a good handling car to be able to get lap time. Of course, if you have all handling, absolutely no straight line speed, no acceleration, that can also be problematic as well. But uh, you do need to be able to carry the corner speed in some ways, otherwise you are in a bit of bother. Now, how do we do in terms of these uh, boost pads? Can we get a nice ooh, a little bit to the left there? Not particularly great from me. Um, got away with it on the landing. Yeah, terrible run off the uh, secondary boost pads. 183 miles an hour around the uh, around the loop, but it was yeah, a very poor run. Still going to hit 212 as we come to the bottom there, which is, what, 10 miles an hour down on the Dodge Dart? We're not talking about the classic Dart here either. We're talking about the modern, terrible front-wheel drive one. That that Dart speed was seriously impressive for the, uh, the run down towards those final corners. I, you definitely can get more out of this car in terms of that uh, loop. Oh, God, we can't get much more in the way of speed, though. Through that first section, we're on the sand and we're off. <laughs> there is not the grip in this car that I was perhaps slightly... Oh, Christ, it suddenly got a lot of a lot of steering all at once as it hit the uh, plastic. There is not as much grip in this car as I was hoping for. I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure this is going to be able to challenge the toy. It might struggle even with the uh, with the charger. Of course, if you can string that uh, perfect lap, there's no way we can do that at 140. It's just not going to happen through there. We have to be a lot, a lot slower. And the problem I think we're going to face with this is it isn't blindingly fast in a straight line. It's not slow, don't get me wrong. <laughs> a 900 horsepower Corvette, and I'm saying it's not that quick. It's it's not slow, but we are getting on for 10 miles an hour slower than the AMC Gremlin going into that split section. That's a relatively short acceleration zone to, for this car to be 10 miles an hour down. I'm surprised it's that far down. I wouldn't have wouldn't have thought. I know the Gremlin had a little bit more power than this, but it wasn't that much more. Um, peculiar. Peculiar indeed. Uh, let's try and get... Well, that was another terrible, terrible run off of that. But it really did, does not like going off that left-hand side pad. Uh, let's try and get to dive down to the inside. Not that it really matters on this lap. This lap very much, uh, very much a goner. Uh, on the brakes we go once more to this, uh, to this final corner. Right. We've got a few more laps to try and get something vaguely decent out of the car. I'm liking that, well, it's planted. Even with 900 horsepower... This car is not particularly keen on uh, on going sideways, on spinning its wheels. I mean, you can have the very, very slow corners, but anything with this much power, you'll be a moron with the throttle and it will want to slide. So, yeah, it's it's nice, nice and planted. But I fear, I fear for the vehicle's overall performance. I mean, it's time through... I say it's time. I'm kind of comparing where the car is in relation to the the moving flag of the ghost, the ghost time, if you will. Uh, through the first sort of three quarters, I think the Jeep is quicker than this. Now, this will gain time around these sort of turns where it has got, uh, where it's got the acceleration that the Jeep doesn't have. But honestly, the Jeep I think is quicker through the quarters, which is a strange thing and a thing I'd rather not have to say. I love the Stingray, don't get me wrong, but. Uh, 
it is struggling a little bit. It's struggling more than I was expecting. When people were saying they want to see me drive this car, I genuinely thought this might be something that could challenge towards the towards the sharp end of the table. It might still do. It might be able to drag out an amazing laptop out of this car. Sometimes vehicles that you don't like, uh, <laughs> you can get some crazy, crazy fast lap times out of uh, without almost realising. But uh, this doesn't feel, does not feel like it is going to be a crazy, crazy fast lap time. And we're on a bit better lap this time around. We still managed to boop the wall on our way through the, uh, uh, the initial split section. Oh, should put it down into second. My stupid... 35-8 on a fairly scruffy lap. Well, we've got two more tries at this. We've got two more tries to uh, find something, anything. I mean, this is pretty much the same time as the Jeep. We've got a, a 900 horsepower Stingray being beaten by the 700 horsepower very, very heavy Jeep because the Jeep goes around corners better than this. It's, um, yeah, not a... No <laughs> Not a sentence I was expecting to say. I, I'm not sure we're going to be able to beat that Daytona. Now we are better through that section. It's the, the crests are causing this car no end of problems. Uh, again, not necessarily what I was expecting from this. Oh, third gear not wanted around there. Cost us a little bit of time. But, uh, well, kind of experimenting slightly still with this car. It's better run, though. 168 fastest we've been into this section. Still a long, long way down on the... AMC. I think it's uh, roughly around where the Mercedes 190E was going, but the Mercedes was much, much better through these corners. So if you're going to be down in terms of corner speed, you're going to have to be a lot higher in terms of straight line speed. Uh, that wasn't a great run through there. Now, I, need to, I don't know why I'm having issues apparently firing this car uh, off to the uh, to the left of this jump. We are, and now we're going straight to the middle. Uh, better run though this time around. Finally, 206 miles an hour on the way up. Struggles a little bit maintaining, even with a good run there, it's just struggled maintaining its speed. Uh, 215 miles an hour, it's only a couple more miles an hour coming into this uh, to this final section. Get everything right, that's more like it. Hey, there we go. That's a lot more like it in terms of a lap time. It doesn't feel that quick though. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really odd one, this. A really odd one. In the, yeah, that is a good lap time. Uh, it's a, a very good lap time, in fact, from this car. It will make it the fastest American car. It's only got to find four tenths on this next lap if we want to go to the top of the table. Whether I can do that or not, I don't quite know. But it doesn't feel quick. It really doesn't. Some cars feel genuinely fast and aren't. And some cars like this feel really... I say feel really slow. Just don't feel anywhere near as fast. It doesn't feel as competitive as the Testarossa did or as the... Sierra did and so on. But it's definitely got some serious speed about it as we head up towards the uh, crossover section for the final, final time. Get the car slowed down through here. Oh, don't brush the wall. We got very, very close. Very, very close to the wall. Now, we can be a little bit neater through here. That would be, uh, that would be nice. It just doesn't turn. It doesn't I don't, know, I don't know how on earth I got a 34-0 out of this car because it really doesn't feel like it is capable of uh, those kind of those kind of lap times, those kind of speeds. Ah, it's not going to be a good run off of the boost pad this time around. Yeah, it, seems, it seems to struggle around the loop a bit as well, and it's not got much in the way of, uh, of top end. As I said, 215 on the best run, but 212 on these other ones. Oh, I might push that one there too much. Yes, I have. <laughs> to the final corner. Well, we're going to spin the wheels and that all went a little bit wrong. I don't think it would have made any difference because we didn't get a good enough run around the loop anyway. That's a serious lap time. That is a serious, serious lap time from this car. And as I said, a vehicle that did not feel that quick. I mean, well done. Well done indeed to the, uh, <laughs> to the Corvette to have pulled that one off. The 34-0 will put the car into a 6th place. It, uh, not sorry, 6th place, 7th place. It loses out fractionally, fractionally to the uh, Supra Mark III by 3 hundredths of a second. It beats the Ford Pursuit Ute, beats the Lamborghini Yalpa, the Renault 5 Turbo. I mean, it's, well, a tenth down pretty much on the Mercedes 190, a couple of tenths down on the Maserati. As I said, four tenths down on the overall leaders. Which makes it a very, very close... It's actually getting very close, top of the table here. And uh, the Corvette is definitely an interesting addition. As I said, highest place American car now. The only American car in the top ten. It's, been, it's put the Daytona uh, out of the top ten now. Doesn't feel quick, though. 
doesn't doesn't feel quick at all um, around. I say at all around this circuit. It, it, it's yeah, not as nice through the corners as you would expect, nor is it that fast in a straight line. Obviously, the combination put it all together, and it is it is quick. Quite clearly, is with a with a lap time like that. Certainly one of the, the surprises, in terms of the way that it drives, and after the surprise of how it drives, the surprise of how fast it goes. Because, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a very, very good time. Well, that is uh, going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. Goodbye.